This video is brought to you by PHPStorm. So at the time of this recording, PHP 8.2 is in the beta release cycle. So we can finally start to discuss what's new and change in the next release of PHP. In this video, we'll discuss the timeline for the release and discuss some of the new features and changes we can expect to see. Hello developers and welcome to the PHP Architect channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Scott Keck Warren and on this channel we discuss a wide variety of topics related to the PHP ecosystem. Make sure you subscribe so you can get our latest videos when they're published. At the time of this recording, PHP 8.3 is scheduled to be released on November 23rd, 2023 after it's gone through alpha, beta, and release candidate phases. It's always possible the date may change as we would rather have them release working software than something with a bug in it. This is actually what happened with the 8.2 release when a critical bug was found just before the release. At the top level, there's nothing that's going to blow your socks off, but like PHP 8.2, this is a good thing. PHP is at that point where it's stabilizing, so we shouldn't expect huge changes all the time, especially because this is a minor release and not a major one. What's included in this release are improvements to the core language, some deprecations, and tweaks to existing syntax and features. Because this is a point release, it's not expected to be a painful upgrade, but there will be some breaking changes. So I have two disclaimers before we go much further. This video was made using the beta release 1 on onlinephp.io, so functionality may change between now and the actual release. I can also not stress enough to not install this in production yet. It is not ready. Now, when you are ready to start upgrading, I generally set up a branch to test our product using automated tests and then fix any bugs that are found in those automated tests. Ideally, we would actually run Rector on them to clean up anything we can automatically. Sometime after the first patch, at least 8.3.1 in this case, we'll start pushing it to our testing environments and production shortly after that. However, if you're interested in trying it now, there are Docker images available and instructions for compiling it directly from source is available. We'll talk about things that have been added after this word from our sponsor. PHP Storm is a cutting edge IDE tailored specifically for PHP and web developers. If you haven't used it before or it's been a while since you last tried it, now's the perfect time to check it out. PHP Storm has recently received significant performance enhancements and has an ever expanding feature set. Now I'm a recent convert to PHP Storm and I love it. One of my favorite features is the ability to run a single test using the icon in the gutter and then repeat it multiple times using keyboard shortcut. Curious if it's the right fit for you? Head to jetbrains.com slash phpstorm to learn more and try it out with a free 30-day trial. Code smarter, not harder. The first new change is the ability to reinitialize read-only properties while cloning an object. PHP 8.1 and 8.2 added read-only properties and read-only classes respectively. Read-only properties and properties in read-only classes could only be written to once and then never again. PHP 8.3 adds support to be able to reinitialize read-only properties when an instance of a class is being cloned. For example, let's say we have a class with a read-only created property that keeps track of when the class was initialized. When we clone this class, the created property will remain the same, which might not be what we want. With this new feature, we can now reinitialize this property in the clone function. Next up is the new JSON validate function. Before 8.3, if we wanted to see if a string was a valid JSON, we would have to pass it into the JSON decode function and then see if a truthy value is returned. This is an acceptable solution, but it comes with the downside that we're initializing a standard class or an array of the value. Depending on the string that we're decoding, this can use a lot of memory. The JSON validate function is being added to determine if a JSON string is valid without initializing that standard class or array, so it saves memory. I would also imagine it would also be faster, but I didn't spend any time benchmarking it. Next up are typed class constants. You can now add type hints to class constants. I think we should be adding types to all the things we possibly can, so I'm glad to see this as it prevents potential bugs. I also have to think it would make things easier for our static code analysis tools like PHP Stan to find those bugs. Next up, we have marking overridden methods. So this one's a little hazy, so stay with me for a bit. Let's say we have a class with a public method in it. In a different class, we extend the original class and override the method with the logic specific to the child class. Later, that parent class is changed and the getUniqueID method is renamed to better express the intent of it. Unfortunately, nobody notices that the 
child class overrides the get unique ID method, and this introduces a bug that's going to be a real headache to find. PHP 8.3 adds the ability to mark a method with the override attribute to express that we're explicitly overriding a function so we get an error if the parent changes. Now when we change the method name, we'll get a fatal error. It will also raise a fatal error if the signature changes. I'm not 100% sure I want to do this with all of my functions, but it sure provides a nice backup for unintended accidents. Next up is anonymous read-only classes. We can now create anonymous read-only classes. They behave just like read-only classes. Also added in this release is the dynamic class constant fetch. So we can now dynamically access class constants using a syntax that's more like what we'd expect. The unserialized function was also changed to warn if there are trailing bytes. Now to wrap it up, there are a few other things that were changed that I would like to briefly mention, which are that they added a missing multi-byte string pad function, the GC status function returns additional garbage collection information now. There's a new INI directive to throw an error when our application is close to overflowing the call stack. There was saner array sum and array product logic introduced, and new functions were added to the randomizer class. There were also some parts of the language that were deprecated and will be removed in PHP 9. Hopefully, Reactor will be able to replace those for us automatically. I hope you enjoyed our video. If so, make sure you subscribe, comment, share and like as it does help others find us. What new feature in PHP 8.3 are you most interested in using? Let us know in the comments below or send me a message on Twitter and phpc.social at Scott Keck Warren. We would love to hear what you have to think and it always brightens my day when I hear from a fan. This is Scott Keck Warren for the PHP Architect channel signing off and reminding you to keep watching, keep coding, and keep reading. Thank <music> you.